and we did last year with significantly less money. And how and why were we able to do that? Because the county stepped up, the river district stepped up, the faith community stepped up, SHRA has stepped up. So all these organizations have stepped up. So I do think we're on track to be able to provide the same number of shelter beds and more than we did last year for a lot less. So I, that's, I think, important for us all to understand. It's not like we haven't made strides, and it's not like the Sacramento community hasn't stepped forward. Um, with respect to what some comments have been made here, the faith community is taking the lead on this already. So you have 10, 15 churches that are out there reaching out to other churches throughout the city and county and beyond to engage the faith community, and they've already said yes. So we've got to continue to build on that. And Pastor Cole, who's outside the city and the county, is leading that charge. So there are churches, uh, Capital Christian, there's Capital Christian, which is in Council Member Sheedy's district. Each of us, or each of you guys here, have churches that are participating. So anything we can do to build on that, that would be a huge asset for all of us. So again, I want to be clear, that is already <coughs> happening. We want to continue to build on it, and we can do more. It gives us an opportunity to really use our churches as a best practice to show that their ministry goes beyond the walls of their church or the walls of their mosque. It goes out into the community where people are most in need. Um, so that's winter shelter. So I guess, Cassandra, I would say to you, um, keep on keeping on in terms of what you're doing on the winter shelter. I know we're trying to obtain raise some dollars and get other $70,000 and continue to recruit um, more churches into the fold. I think we're going to get there with the leadership we have. But keep us updated in terms of what we need to do and what we're not doing and what we can do more of. Um, in terms of the unfunded shelters, um, I would like to hear what it may cost us, and maybe there's dollars we can raise privately or maybe the city managers to work magic. I don't really know. But let us know what those real costs are associated with the unfunded shelter. Because again, we need to know now. And I could not agree with Councilman Ricci on any more on this topic. We cannot continue to have a discussion on winter shelter when the weather is starting to turn to the winter months. We cannot continue to do this. And Council Member Prethway also said, whether it be year-round or a strategy this year-round, we should provide winter shelter right now, and then as soon as we get that squared away, we should immediately try to figure out how to solve it so we're not in this same predicament year after year after year. And that's a commitment that I think we can all work toward um, making it happen. So that's, that's kind of on the winter shelter front. So Cassandra, are you good on that? So that's, I think, point two. Yes. Um, the third point is on safe ground. And I think for some reason, this topic is probably the one that confuses everyone more than every other topic. And again, if we have 3,000 people that are homeless, and we're talking transitional housing, the safe ground piece is just a small thread of transitional housing, a very small thread. And we're talking 50 to 100 people. So that's not a large number for any of us that we're trying to consider. So I'd like to just frame it slightly different. I think that the safe ground community, you guys deserve to have us be responsive to the desires that you've been trumpeting and shadow, shadow, sh shouting about and making your voices heard for over a year. So we've got to figure out a way to be more responsive to that. So what I understand is you guys have said these key features are really important. Number one, you want to be able to look at a small group in terms of a pilot, 50 to 100 people. That's similar to what Council Member McCarty said. So I think there's consistency there. Number two, the location. Siting is a big issue. The good news is there's something called a <coughs> temporary resident shelter component that's already in place. So let's look at what we can do within that current temporary resident shelter piece and see what we can do like under 24 or over 24. I think that's consistent. Um, I do think, and I agree, I would like to see as the safe ground community is out there looking at potential options. I would like to see something that's near services, something that's not near services, something that's not in the city, something that's outside of the city. Give us what those options are, even if you choose one. Just show us that you've looked at all the different scenarios. That, I don't think is too much for all of us to ask for. So as you're getting to the site that you'd like to be in, remember, show us that you've done your due diligence and looked at one, more than one site, whether it's city owned or not. I think that's a, a huge testament to your commitment and what you guys have done so far. So that's kind of on the, on the location side. In terms of the selection criteria, I think this is one of the most important ones. You guys have said that you would have zero tolerance when it comes to drugs and alcohol. That is a huge commitment. I think we need to recognize that. You have said zero tolerance when it comes to drug and alcohol. 
You've also said that you want it to be transitional. So the transition typically is 18 to 24 months. Then we're willing to do it 12 to 18 months. That is shortening, shortening the length of what we mean by transition. And I think you should be respected and admired for that, knowing that we're trying to get it to even less of a transition period. That's where the federal government is going. That's certainly where I think we should be going. In terms of governance, you've talked about it being managed by a nonprofit with a good neighbor policy. Certainly, that's something I recommend and is certainly very supportive of. You've talked about having security there. So private security, all those things are things that really disarm us as a council because you're addressing probably our key needs and key concerns. In terms of, in terms of services, uh, Council Member Fong is not here, but you guys have proposed a hub and spoke model, which essentially means you have a case manager on site which routes, up, routes people to outside services. That is what we mean by empowering services. So you are addressing every single concern that I think we have one by one. In terms of cost, you're talking about can you privately raise the majority of the dollars to fund this pilot program? Why would we want to stand in the way if you're going to raise the majority of the dollars and maybe the city provides some land, maybe we provide a third or a quarter of what it is that you need to make this project successful, that's certainly something I'm willing to look at. And you guys also have shown that it's more cost effective per person than many of the other shelter options out there. So from a taxpayer standpoint, I think it makes good sense for their